Today is the fifth day of the blessed month of Hator. May God begin it in goodness and renew it for us in peace and tranquility, while our sins and iniquities are forgiven through the tender mercies of our Lord, O my fathers and my brethren. Amen. The Church celebrates on this day the commemoration of the appearance of the head of St. Longinus the soldier, who pierced the side of our Savior with the spear while he was on the cross. When he saw what took place during the crucifixion from wonders, Longinus was perplexed, and his heart revered what he saw. After the resurrection, the Lord Jesus Christ sent to him the Apostle St. Peter, who taught him the facts of the Christian faith. He believed, was baptized, and abandoned the military service. He went back later on to his country, Cappadocia, and preached there the gospel of salvation. The Jews became furious at him, so they bribed Pontius Pilate, who accused Longinus before Tiberius Caesar. Pilate obtained from Caesar in order to behead him, so he sent a soldier to Cappadocia to execute St. Longinus. The soldier fulfilled the task and brought the head to Jerusalem and handed it to Pontius Pilate. Pilate showed the head to the Jews, who rejoiced at his deed. Pilate commanded that the head be buried in one of the piles of refuse outside of Jerusalem. There was a woman from Cappadocia who had believed in the Lord Christ at the hands of St. Longinus, who became blind. She took her son and departed to Jerusalem to be blessed by the holy places and the sepulchre of the Savior. When she arrived to Jerusalem, her son died. She became very sad and grieved because of her condition, and there was no one to take her back to her own country. During her sleep one night, she saw in a vision St. Longinus, and with him was her son. He directed her to the whereabout of his head, and he ordered her to remove it from there. When she woke up, she rejoiced and was consoled. She asked about the place that the saint had pointed out to her. She dug in the ground, and a sweet aroma of incense came out. When she reached the head of the saint, a great light shone from it, and her eyes were open, and immediately she was able to see. She glorified the Lord Christ, kissed the head, perfumed it with spices and fragrant oils, and placed it with the body of her son. Then she returned with them back to her own country, glorifying the Lord Christ, who performed wonders through his saints. The blessings of the prayers of St. Longinus be with us all. Amen. On this day also the church celebrates the commemoration of the martyrdom of St. Timothy. He was a deacon for a small village church in the district of Ancina, and was married to a young lady called Mora. Emperor Diocletian issued his orders to persecute the Christians, burn their books, and force them to worship the idols. Arianus, the governor of Ancina, brought Timothy the deacon and ordered him to bring the books of the church to bring, burn them, as he also ordered him to raise incense for the idols. Timothy refused and told the governor, Is it possible for a father to hand down by his own free will his own children to an avenging enemy? The governor became angry and ordered his soldiers to torture Timothy. They forced red-hot iron rods in his ears, so his face swelled, lost his hearing, and also his sight. Arianus told him, Raise incense to the idols, and I will stop torturing you. Timothy replied, There is no benefit for your persistence, for I do not feel the torture because my Lord Jesus Christ relieves my pain. Arianus cru crucified him, head down on a pole, and brought his young bride Mora to persuade him that he might yield and raise incense to the idols. Instead, he preached her with the words of the gospel and talked to her about the eternal life and the crown of martyrdom. She went to Arianus and declared her Christianity and that she preferred to be martyred with her husband than a life in worshipping idols. The governor started to torture her with a successive dreadful means, but she faced them bravely and silently. Later on, Arianus the governor ordered to crucify the pious deacon Timothy and his wife Mora facing each other. They agreed not to fall asleep on the cross, lest the Lord come and find them asleep. They remained crucified for several days, then delivered their spirits in the hand of God, whom they loved, and thus they received the crown of martyrdom, the blessing of their prayers be with us all. Amen. Also on this day is the commemoration of the relocation of the body of the Prince Theodore of Shotby from the region of Achaia to the city of Shot in the province of Asyut. After the era of persecution has ended, this saint appeared to a priest and ordered him to relocate his body to his father's town, Eshot, in Upper Egypt. This priest went to the governor of the region of Achaia, where the body of the saint was buried. He told him that it was crucial to move the body of the saint to the city of Shot in Upper Egypt. However, the governor refused. The governor had a 25-year-old son who was deaf and mute, and he was present during this dialogue. He cried out, saying, Welcome to the relics of St. Tedros, to his native country, Egypt. 
Everyone was amazed that this mute young man was talking, and they glorified God, who cured him with the prayers of Prince Tedros. The governor immediately said, My son was cured with the might of God and the prayers of Prince Tedros. Go and relocate his pure body to Egypt. The translocation of the body was achieved in a wonderful celebration. They placed the body in a ship that arrived to the city of Alexandria on the 5th of the month of Hator. Then it was relocated to the city of Shutz, but where they built a great church for him. The church was consecrated by the bishop of the city with joy and jubilation and placed the body in it. Many signs and wonders were manifested from the body as healing the sick and casting out evil spirits. The blessings of their prayers be with us all. Amen. On this day also, St. Joseph, the disciple of Emba Elijah on Mount Shema, departed. This saint was the son of the nobles of the city of Quift. His father died while he was still young and his mother nursed him the faith, but soon she also departed. His older brother took care of him and raised him up. A holy man called Elias lived on the mount nearby Quift. He admired the young man Yoseb and prayed for him so the Lord would grant him a totally dedicated heart. Yoseb became seriously ill that baffled the doctors. They brought him to St. Elias, who prayed for him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and was immediately healed. Yusab became the disciple of St. Elias and followed his footsteps in everything, especially in worship and asceticism. His teacher loved him because of the grace of God that was evident in his life. St. Yusab fell ill and departed to the Lord. His teacher was greatly sorrowful and told those burying him to widen the grave so it would take two. Accordingly, they realized that the departures of St. Elias was drawn near. Shortly after, he became ill and departed in peace and was buried next to his disciple, St. Yosab. The blessing of the prayers be with us all and glory be to our God forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.